cruising, 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 cruising on down the street. Country living, ladies and gentlemen. Bunch of almond trees. I think those are almond trees. <clears throat> anyway, heading into downtown Davis. No idea what I'm going to see out there. I think everything is like closed. But uh, I'm not really concerned or worried about like what's closed or what's open. Because I'm just going to be going on a walk. Then I have a Skype call that I have to take. And I just usually take those from the car. And uh, later today, I am getting uh, a bunch of shit tested. I'm going to get tested what I'm burning during my training session. Um, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be faster or not for this. So I didn't eat anything yet today. Um, I got to do like a VO2 max, which I'm a little bit nervous about actually because my hammies have been a little bit weird. So I don't know what kind of maximum I can give these guys. <clears throat> um, I might have to do it with upper body more so than lower body. I'm not sure, but uh, maybe, we can, maybe we can figure it out. But anyway, I'm excited to learn about like what I burn during training and what I burn at certain heart rates. That's what the information uh, that we're gonna gather today. Uh, I'm gonna get hooked up, hooked up to some sort of metabolic machine. Uh, I don't know the name of this one, but I've heard in the past that some of these things are called Pinoe machines. I think that might be a brand. And yeah, it's gonna give me an idea of like, you know, what energy system am I tapping into? It's not as simple as people make it out to be. People are like, oh, you just go in the gym and you, you know, you train at this heart rate and you burn fat. <clears throat> well, that's not necessarily true. A lot of people that are unhealthy will burn uh, carbohydrates. And not even so much unhealthy, but a lot of people who aren't primed for it. So I'm actually gonna guess and say that I burn through a, probably a pretty good amount of glucose as well especially because my glucose is high because that's a natural adaptation to a carnivorous style diet, especially in the morning. So what happens is in the morning, I believe this is due to your cortisol levels being a little bit lower. Cortisol levels are down a little bit in the morning and because they're, they're down, a natural adaptation to it is for your uh, blood sugar to be a little bit higher in the morning on this style of diet and that's what that happens to diabetics and stuff like that too and so it doesn't necessarily mean that i have a cortisol problem a cortisol problem would mean that i have fluctuations in cortisol and i have a poor cortisol rhythm which i may also have too so stan efforting had me uh order up some ashawanga i believe that's how you say it <laughs> i might have messed that up uh i won't even bother to try to repeat it again but anyway he had me order up some of that and uh, waiting on my Amazon Prime delivery. And once I get a hold of that, my cortisol is gonna be so low, you guys won't even fucking believe it. You guys will be like, what is happened to Mark? His cortisol so low. I, I don't even know what that's gonna do. I just thought it sounded cool to hype it. And I don't think I'm gonna, you know, I don't know if I'm gonna, well, fuck it. I'm gonna train today, I'm gonna do some shoulders. So when we get done, when they get done uh, milking me for all I'm worth, uh, this cardio piece uh, we'll do uh, we'll do some shoulders uh, you know it, it's gonna be interesting to see what downtown Davis is like there's always a lot of people walking there uh, there's always a lot of energy downtown that's part of the reason why I moved to this area in the first place I love it for all that but you know now I understand you know that things aren't going to be the same and a lot of people got to stay uh, locked up um, for me, you know, I know that I should be home. I know that, but I'm just going to try to not be around any people that I haven't been around. Um, so I'm, I'll be at work a little bit and I realize that those decisions aren't even great. Um, main thing is I'm just going to stay away from my parents for the next like two weeks or so just cause like, I, you know, I, I have some heavy concerns about them. I feel like if they get sick that, uh, like, I don't think either one of them would even die from it necessarily, but I think they would die from it potentially down the road. You know, I think it would knock years off their life or, you know, and then when you're in your 70s, you know, you're starting to get up there a little bit. So everything's kind of sensitive and it's just, they're both, they're both fine right now. You know, they're both healthy. So, uh, you know, I don't have any reason to believe that this would like wipe them off their feet, but 
in talking to some of my friends I have you know I know somebody um, who's a physician I talked to her yesterday uh, that's uh, Gabrielle Lyons she's on my podcast yesterday and she said she has she has patients uh, that have their parents have it and she has patients that actually have it themselves but in particular she's got one person that has both their parents have it and they're both elderly people they're both in their 70s when I say elderly I don't want people to think that we're just talking about older people that are frail these are older people that were fine and they're not fine anymore um, both this uh, this patient is going to end up losing uh, this girl is going to end up losing both of her parents within the next week and I, that's just that's unbelievable to me you know like that's just uh, I mean guys girls you know uh, walk yourself through it you know honestly I think that's what you should do walk yourself through worst case scenario like you should think like I you shouldn't be shocked if you have coronavirus right now you shouldn't be shocked at all uh, you shouldn't be shocked if your children are carrying it you know it's my understanding that children can't really get too ill from it um, I don't know that a hundred percent but that's just the information I got for now <laughs> anyway you know like walk yourself through it so that way you already know what to do you know does everyone have like their will and shit like you know I'm being uh, I'm being 100% serious why not be prepared like look you already know people are dying you know why not be prepared for it it's shitty but that's the way it be anyway gonna get a nice big fat walk in throw on some headphones listen to some music listen to some daily stoicism maybe um, Ryan Holiday want to check some of his stuff out he's got some great information i love i love stoicism and i love uh listening to stuff about the dow i don't know if you guys have ever heard of that before i'm not even try to spell it because i don't know how to spell it at the moment but you can just kind of look it up in whatever way you can try to spell it <clears throat> you can try d-o-w and like shit will come up because i've spelled it that way before but that's not how it's spelled it's, it's, it's something different anyway um <clears throat> there's a lot of great I just, I just, I love getting, um, you know, I love, I love learning stuff on a really broad, general level that help, and what it helps me with is it helps, uh, pump some wisdom in my brain, you know, and helps me make better decisions and better choices in my life, and it helps me remain a lot more calm, because I can process stuff a lot better than I used to be able to, not that I was ever not calm, it's always been pretty chill, but uh, it helps to enhance that even further. Anyway, I'm gonna find a parking spot. I'm gonna go for a walk. Absolutely destroying this 10 minute walk right now. There's Phil's coffee over there and it's closed. Son of a bee. I think it's closed anyway. Really no one around, a couple people around, pretty dead, but more importantly, I'm getting in my walk. I have a fast going on for today. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be fasted or not, but uh, with this VO2 max thing that I'm going to give a go to, I think it's better off to be fasted. Plus, I don't want to barf everywhere, but that may be inevitable. Let's uh, let's see what the hell happens. Let's see what they got in store for me. Testing that VO2 max. I think that's what we're going to be doing. That's why I got this little backpack thing on. And I got this mask on. Look, I can't even drink any water with this stupid thing on. <laughs> Let me give it a shot. See how it goes? Yep. You want to walk us through what you're putting on? So I'm putting a heart rate monitor on so that we can find out what's going on. Because once we get into the mask, we want to pair that with heart rate data. Any good spot? So let's go up towards the sternum siphoid process. There we go. <laughs> this is to ensure... It's a microphone. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we, we, <laughs> we want to know what his heart rate is. We want to know whether he is down 
regulated, whether he's upregulated. If his resting heart rate is at a 70 and he's really good at burning fat, it's still concerning to me, right? Because like, a guy of Mark's caliber should be probably somewhere in the 50s, um, if not better. Uh, mm -hmm. I, and you're strong enough and fit enough now. I think yeah. we should be covering that base. And if not, then we're going to help to uncover that by getting breath data and heart rate data. Cool. So this is just a baseline. So, do you mind if we take the phone out of the room for you? Yeah, sure. Cool. Because if you hear it vibrate, we're going to yeah, see yeah. it. Yep. His name is Brian. <laughs> 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 It's like, it's a power to thing, Jim, so I'll take twice our cardio piece of equipment doesn't really do a whole lot. Cool. Yeah, it does, a, does a lot of that. It does that. Okay, cool. That's interesting. It's a good thing I've run a lot of these tests, though what 90 watts feels yeah. like. So you're about a buck 20 right now, you back off a little bit. Cool, there it is. Piece of equipment, though, doesn't, nothing else fan bike wise compares to it been on a lot of them and this this thing is top of the line so about a minute into this next stage you got probably one more big jump ahead of you and this is that stage of work that feels what would look commonly be called threshold right. it's like that borderlands of uncomfortableness uh, where everybody tells you the results are and they are there but we need to work that lower end you're a good example of someone who works 10 minutes of low intensity all the time. Like often, 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 you probably accumulate three hours a week of low intensity cardiovascular stuff, right? That is checking a big, huge box for you. My anticipation for you, knowing a little bit about how you train, is that we might see that the top, top end of cardiovascular wellness is available to us to gain. One through 10, how are you feeling? Eight. stage how far does someone need to push it for you to get the reading that you need like vo2 is really the biggest piece of that push mm -hmm. the other piece is is do they have access to their top end it mm. says so much about the training right because if they don't have access to it we right. could give more effort to a hundred percent of their workouts right. by giving them access to seven eight fifteen beats per right. minute right. So if we can get them access at more top end, yeah. then the bottom end gets better work. Yeah. Um, perceived exertion goes down through the rest of the workout. That's Most the of the people that you test that are kind of like uh, lean kind of without trying, mm -hmm. do they tend to just be super efficient at this without? No, they tend to be terribly inefficient. They oh, tend inefficient. to have carb burn. Um, they're burning shit at all weird times. Yeah, yeah. So unless so they've they're... been talking about, I'm doing, like, this is what I'm doing, I'm right. working these systems, then people that tend to just work hard tend to burn a lot of carbohydrates. Mm. And then that's something that we grew up learning, 80s, right. 90s. Right. It's like carbs are supporting workouts. Like, I can't work out hard without my carbs. Mm. And I mean, how many, so it's how many times like have you heard this? Partially due to the fact that it's like kind of been encouraged and ingrained, ingrained in your head. So you're like, oh, I need carbs for my workout. You have carbs, and then maybe therefore, because you had have carbs since you're young, two hours before and eight hours before, like the night before, uh -huh. load up on pasta for football. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what's available to you. So now we talk about that metabolic flexibility, right? Using what is available. And now we're using yeah. what's available and you're making carbs abundantly available. An example is me super, super lean. When I first started working at Lifetime, 81% mm -hmm. carb burner at rest. Wow. Which is oh, an insanely okay. inefficient system. I see, I see. That guy is always effing hungry. I'm How does that always have to hungry. Do with your or was. So, I, does it have anything to do with it? It does, yeah. So now I'm burning more. So, um, carbohydrates require more metabolic processing, mm. more metabolic waste to remove. Right. Like they're faster right. in that upfront and require more on the back end, whereas fat requires more upfront right. and then nothing on the back end. Kind of the original version of a face pull right here.
Start getting tired, they start coming out here. There you go, Mark. Woo. There you go, Mark. All the way through. Yeah, you get some whole dry tip roast and big ribeye roast. But I'm hoping they restock. Like, I think the big buying off is kind of ended. Like, those are all the people who want to do. Yeah, I just went to do my weekly grocery shopping. And where's, the, where's the beef? Right. There you go, Mark. Chains. Hitting up the old grocery store. Gonna see what they got in store for me. Get it in store, grocery store. Gonna check in and see what they got going on over there. Just uh, picking up some meat and some rolls. Rolls for my kids. Gonna cook up some burgers. I think my wife was talking about getting some like corned beef and cabbage, but she's getting it from some restaurant. And I don't wanna deal with the shitty ingredients of what would be in there. So I'm stopping off and getting some some food that I think is a better option. Anyway, uh, if I can, I'll try to film inside. They get mad at me sometimes if I film inside here, but I'll see what I can do. Oh, and today's been an amazing day. It's been, today's been tremendous um, having some of that testing done. Um, and then also I got in a killer shoulder workout. I felt really good. I uh, got a sick pump, as I like to say. I, I need to work on the shoulders and biceps a little bit more. I, I kind of don't, I don't really enjoy working either one of them. Biceps are kind of tough just because I've torn both of them in the past and so it just doesn't feel great to work them, but they're not strong. You know, I need to work on them more and be connected to them more. They just need work, 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 work. And then uh, shoulders, yeah, I could use a little bit more shoulders going on. So working on that shit. Um, and then also in addition to that, I got hooked up to a Pinoy machine today for the first time. Can I get a hay now? It is 5 p.m., I haven't eaten anything all day. Last meal last night was around nine o'clock. And uh, going in here to shop right now, gonna eat. Hopefully I'll eat by like six. Otherwise I'll end up going crazy. Again, I've expressed this before, but like when I go home, I'm probably gonna cook. I'll probably eat some food and then I'll take a shower and then I'll probably eat again and that'll be it for the night. But I like taking a shower and laying my clothes out for the next day. It gets me set forward moving in the right direction i don't have anything that i need to do until nine o'clock tomorrow and so if i need to i can sleep in a little bit so i can go to bed a little bit later i don't like to switch my schedule too much in terms of when i go to bed and when i wake up um so i'll still get to bed what you guys would consider to be early um <clears throat> but yeah it was interesting getting hooked up to that machine today and getting my metabolic rate checked and, and all that stuff was actually really really cool they, uh, they're going to be able to tell me whether I'm burning carbs or whether I'm burning fat. And they're going to be able to tell me exactly how I can condition myself to like, I can figure out and target specific styles of training to get specific results where otherwise it's just kind of a shot in the dark. I think when it comes to conditioning work, unless you've been doing it for a long time, unless you've been studying it, but I haven't been studying. I don't know a ton about it. So I'm excited to find out what they're going to, you know, the information that they're going to give me based off this vo2 max based off of me being on that bike hooked up to that bane mask for a while it was uh it was different you know and, and like how hard was it like it wasn't that hard you know it wasn't that bad i think you know everybody makes everything out to be like this brutal thing and it was it was it wasn't easy but uh and the difficulty level was kind of high but ain't nothing hard ain't nothing hard i'm ready for any and all things including this coronavirus i'm ready for it to wipe out everybody I'm ready to be the last man standing if that's if that's what it takes and I'm I'm going to be the one to push humanity forward. I'm just kidding by the way. I don't want to see that happen. That's for sure. Anyway, it's just been absolutely crazy. Please encourage your parents as I rub my eye with coronavirus. Sorry, something's really itchy in there. But now I just got infected and I'm going to pass on everybody else. You know, please you know, if you still have parents and grandparents that are around, if you're fortunate enough to be in that boat, please encourage them strongly to stay home. And please don't hang out with them, you know, as much as you want to at this moment. 
don't spend time with your parents. Call them. FaceTime them. It'll have a similar impact. Call them up right now and say, Happy St. Patrick's Day. That's all I'll actually do after I get done shopping in here. Anyway, I better go get some food or I'm going to get hangry. A lot of eggs wiped out. Cruising down the street, chewing on some of these guys. Got some hard-boiled eggs. That way, when I get home, like... I don't know about you guys, but like I've recognized that when I get home, you know, sometimes I'm like way too much, I don't know, like cooking frantically and, and picking off food while I'm while I'm cooking and like I'm just really, really hungry. And then I find myself a little frustrated with how I'm cooking or frustrated with the kids or whatever. And so like rather than like eating while I'm standing up and shouting at people. I try to do things a little bit more mindfully, so I'm having a snack in the car. I might eat cheese, or I might eat uh, some sort of seafood before I leave work, because at work we have a lot of Wild Planet products, so I might eat something like that. Or if I go home, I might eat a couple pieces of cheese. I try to do it like where I'm sitting down at least on one of our like bar stools, where I can like concentrate on whatever it is I'm eating, enjoy it, have some conversation with my wife be a lot more relaxed and chill while something is heating up or whatever it might be. I just found that that just feels better to me. It's more fun. And then also, in addition to that, when it's time to eat with my kids, when it's time to eat with my wife, I have the you know great opportunity to sit down with them, concentrate on them, make sure this thing's away, right? Look at these beautiful cows in the background, by the way. I don't know if you can see them. Let me I turn the camera around the other way here for a second. No one's behind me, so here we go. Look at these cows. This is what I get to drive home to every day. All these cows, beautiful creatures. Very, very pretty. Anyway, back to what I was saying. You know, I like to, you know, you kind of hear people say, live in the moment, you know, and that's basically what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to be present. I'm trying to be present and, uh, to me, that's what it means. It means get your fucking phone away. No one's more important than your family. And you're starting to see that now, right? Like, hopefully everyone's recognizing that. What a wonderful time we're in. It's unfortunate that we have this thing that's killing a lot of people. And it's going to kill more people. And uh, it has been said that they think every single person's going to end up with it. Yikes. <laughs> Pretty crazy. But if you know anything about containment, and if you heard anything on the news about containment, like, you can't contain it. Uh, you can't do a, a lot to prevent it spreading other than, like, wash your hands and pray. Wash your hands and pray. Wash your hands and pray. Seems to be uh, the only thing that's useful. But there will be a vaccine for it. There will be something for it. They're testing stuff right now as we speak. And, uh, you know that will be available when it's available but like you know we have a year or so probably to ride out before you start to see that available to the masses right even if it even if their trials work well and there's some things for like malaria and some other things that they're starting to find out seem to prevent it um but anyway it's going to take a while at the store you know they didn't have any eggs they were allowed of like some stuff but it wasn't that bad you know, it wasn't that bad. People where I live tend to be, like, I don't know. They, it seemed to be less freaked out, maybe because of where I live. I live out kind of the country a little bit. Um, anyway, um, what I noticed was on the way out, I said to the clerk, I said, she said, oh, you getting ready for tonight? You know, I was buying some hamburger meat and stuff. And they see me in there all the time. And I said, oh, absolutely. I said, you know, I'm looking forward to spending time with my kids going to watch a movie tonight. We watched a movie last night, watched a movie the night before. And they said, you are the only person that said that. I said, everybody else is complaining. And that's because Mark Bell doesn't complain. Well, that's actually not true. I complain all the time. But I like to do, I do like to look at the brighter side of a lot of things. And, and certainly in these times, like I am enjoying hanging out with my kids a little bit more. Although today, unfortunately, I've been out of the house for almost the entire day. Um, 
so I gotta make sure I'm around a little bit more, adjust my schedule so I can be around for them a little bit more, but it has been really wonderful um, to spend more time with them throughout the day and then also, you know, getting that time together at night. I keep telling them, like, this is legendary shit going on. Like, this is not, this, this kind of thing uh, isn't gonna happen again in their lifetime, although this, who knows how long school will be closed for, maybe this will c continue into next year and stuff. And that's where these administrators and people's minds need to get to is they need to think about next year and the year after. Like that's what, that's what people need to start getting their mind wrapped around. Like what if this virus is the end of the fucking world? You know, like have, has anybody thought about that? Like Jesus Christ, people get your shit together. Think of worst case scenarios and play it out from there. Like you better get your shit together. You know, these school administrations better get their shit together and they better figure out how people can get their education, even if there is a virus going on, because what if in the in the face of COVID-19, something else pops up? That is very probable, that is very likely. Like that could happen. Out of all the things that could happen, could that happen? It sure as fuck could. Could the situation just continue to get a whole lot worse? Could COVID-19 turn into something that negatively impacts children more so than what it does now? Sure could. It sure as fuck could. And people better be ready. And I don't think anyone's really prepared. Uh, you know, I've played it out in my head. I don't know all the solutions. I don't have all the answers on what to do about it. But I'm ready. I've got my mind. I got my mind ready. I'm ready for any and all stuff. I'm accepting. I'm accepting. And you should be accepting of the fact you might have it right now. It doesn't mean you panic about it because panic does nothing. Worrying about stuff has never done anything for anybody. It's never been effective. It Worrying about stuff does not help with problem solving. And problem solving is what we're always after. We need to be able to solve problems. So it's how much you worry or how much you scream or how loud you scream doesn't matter, right? What matters is you start to think about a solution. So rather than complaining and rather than crying, and rather than be like, oh my God, we're out of school. You should think about when will, be, when will we be able to resume school? If I'm an administrator at a school, that's what I'm thinking about. And I'm working hard on figuring out what makes the most sense. What's something I could propose to people? What's something I can poke holes in to see if that actually makes sense? And who do I propose this to? And then when I communicate that out, what does that look like? Because I'm thinking, like, we don't know how long. Like, they said it's going to last a year, right? There's not going to be a vaccine for a year. So if there's not a vaccine for a year, you know, it, it's not readily available for people for 12 months to 18 months. Then also, too, what if what they give people has negative side effects? What if after six months of administering it to thousands of people, they find out the side effects aren't worth the risk? Possible. It is possible. So administrators, if you're watching any school, any people that are involved in any school, whether you're a teacher or whatever, you should be asking these questions. You have a right to be asking these questions. And also, you have a right to come up with some solutions. Be creative. Creative control. People are freaking out. Now's the time to be creative. Now's the time to think. What do you got? What you got for us? Online? Sure, let's do it. But let's figure it out. How do we do it? How do we do web classes? How do we do it? Other people do it. They do it throughout the whole entire country for a lot of stuff. People know how to do shit when, when money's on the line, when monetary gain is involved. They know how to do it. But this is our free school system. They're not going to be able to come up with much of anything, I don't think. I got no hope. <laughs> I'll stop being negative. I'm not going to complain. In fact, now that we're talking about it, now that I'm, well, now that I'm talking about it, I am going to see what I can implement. I'll get involved. How about that? I'm going to try to get involved. Not try to get involved. I'm going to get involved. Don't know on what level. Going to at least try on a local level. And uh, I'm going to start asking some of those questions. Because why would I push it out onto you? Why would I only push it out on the administrators? Why don't I start asking some questions and see what I, where I can get? Because I care about our children. I care about your children. I care about my children. I care about my nieces and nephews. 
I care about all those little suckers, right? And uh, I don't want to see them, even though I, even though I'm not a fan of the school system, I'd still like to understand how they're going to resume their education. That's what I'd like to know. I hate school. I really do. I hope, I hope it just disappears forever, really. But more seriously, um, I don't want to see that happen. I want people to have an opportunity at education. And I do wish that school was better than it is. And I wish that they would uh, implement some new shit because they haven't done anything in so long. I think kids go to school for way too long. I, uh, the school year's way too long. They go to school for way too many hours. It's just, it's absolutely insane. I don't see my son every day until like four o'clock. You know, it's just, it's weird that like he, it's almost like he's at work every day, but he learns some stuff, but he's not truly getting educated. I don't think, I don't know. It's even worse. The younger the kids are, at least my son's 16 and my daughter's 12. So they're, they are learning some pretty good stuff. I don't think they're going to learn anything about the world though. Or learn how to, you know, their credit card. Or learn the importance of owning a home. Or, the, you know, just all the stupid mistakes you see 20-year-olds make. Easily, easily avoided through proper education. And then all the dysfunction we have. All the depression, all the anxiety, all that stuff is very, very preventable. Not for everybody, but very preventable for a lot of people. If they're taught properly on how to deal with those situations. Anyway, I'm going to see what I can do. I'm starving, so I'm going to go eat. Later. Look what I got going on. Look at this big old chuck roast. Searing the outside of it. Got a burger going over here. Got some stuff going on in the crock pot. I'm actually throwing this big old ribeye in there. Not really supposed to throw ribeyes in the crock pot. But remember, there's no rules in Smelly's Kitchen. Going to flip this bitch over. Let's see if we can figure out how to flip it over. What do we got here? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? I don't see any good tools in there for flipping. Can't really use a spatula, can you? Could probably use this. Let's see what we can do with this guy. Switch hands. Here we go. Wish me luck. Get this side for a minute. Because we're going to stick this sucker in the crock pot. And get it over this way more. Over this way more. Sear all those juices in there. Oh, good God. Woo! Shit, maybe I should throw this thing in the oven. Maybe I need to call an audible. Might be better in the oven. <laughs> wow! Burgers sitting over here. Some yummy, yummy burgers. A little burger for Daisy. Burger for my daughter. Got her some ketchup. Got her some sushi as well. And, uh, Got some yummy cottage cheese. Some trashy movie playing in the background. I'm not sure what it is, but it's just rolling. And then there's my magnesium, which is uh, right here. Here's my magnesium. This is the stuff I use, Mag Focus. I want to give it a shot. Magnesium Theranate powder. Supposed to be able to digest it and absorb it really well. Got the crock pot going over here. With that ribeye, I threw the bone in there. And it's just sitting in some bone broth. Everyone always asks me about the recipe, but that's all it's doing. And then let's see, where's the light? <clears throat> Jesus, this movie's horrible. I don't know what's going on. And uh, that's the chuck roast. I don't know even know if that's the right thing to throw it in, but we got no rules. So threw it in there for about 20 minutes at 300, see what happens. So I already ate a good amount of food. But uh, I was instructed earlier today, based off of what they saw, is that, <clears throat> you know, I need like about well, almost 4,000 calories just to kind of like maintain. And they asked if I ever had cravings. And I said, well, yeah, to be honest, yeah, I still have cravings. And they said what they found with some of the people they've been helping is that when you feel like you're done eating, like 
force yourself to eat a little bit more. So that's what I'm gonna try to do right now. I have like a really small uh, little mini patty left that I was gonna, that I gave Daisy a little chunk of. So there's that. And I got these two eggs right here. And if I need to eat more, I'll eat more. I, I don't have bad cravings. I just um, like yogurt, you know, whey protein, stuff like that. I eat that to kind of like survive. But I've noticed that when I don't eat that, when I mainly stick to just meat, the more carnivore I am, I feel like the leaner that I get. The problem is it's hard to eat enough calories that way. And so you kind of, you end up riding the fine line of, am I gonna continue to eat less so I can be leaner, um, but also potentially lose some muscle, lose some strength and not feel as good? Or am I gonna find like that happy medium? And that's kind of what I'm looking for now is that happy medium. Medium. I went, you know, over the calories a lot with like milk and meat and cheese and yogurt and heavy cream. Like that makes it great. That makes the diet really powerful. And I suggest it to any of you that are trying to gain weight. I was able to gain a lot of weight off it. I was able to get thick real quick and strong. But, you know, when you're trying to stay a little leaner, so I'm gonna see if I eat this, if, you know, I'm impacted a little bit by eating this. This is called protein leveraging. By eating more protein, a lot of times it'll drive your hunger down. Hunger is one thing, cravings are kind of another. I don't really have strong cravings anymore. Like we could have, you know, apple pie in here, or we could have ice cream cake is one of my favorite things. We could have that in here and it wouldn't really affect me one way or the other. So anyway, I feel pretty strong, but I'm trying to still learn. And let's not forget, where can knowledge come from? You know, the guys I listened to today, neither one of them looks like a bodybuilder. But where can knowledge come from, everybody? It can come from anyone, right? So I'm gonna take their advice and give it a shot. I got nothing to lose by it. So here we go, I'm gonna eat these eggs, I'm gonna eat this meat, and uh, if I'm still hungry, I'll maybe act upon my cravings or my extra hunger and see what that leads to, but I'm certainly not gonna go off the diet. Going off the diet is never really a concern for me at this point. I am a you know third degree black belt um, when it comes to nutrition, when it comes to dieting. The concern is just to kind of keep eating. So that's what I'm gonna try to see if I can stuff back and see if I can get it past. If I don't eat anything else and you don't hear from me, that's because this day is over and it's because I'm, I managed it successfully. Um, I also got an 85 in terms of my sleep score last night, which is huge improvement when it's been in like 70s and 60s and stuff like that. So a little bit of progress on the sleep. I've been laying down every day, like I said, uh, since the beginning of the month <clears throat> for, um, not since the beginning of the month, since the 70th, 70th day of this challenge, the Carnivore 100 challenge, Carnivore 100 diet. <clears throat> since the beginning of that, or since uh, 78 days into that, the final 30 days, I told all of you I was gonna try to be in bed for eight and a half, nine hours. And that's what I've been doing, mainly nine hours. It's been nine hours every day, but I haven't been sleeping that great every single day. So last night was a big improvement. Hopefully that still stays. If this is it, strength is never a weakness, weakness is never a strength. Catch y'all later. <laughs> I just love this show is playing in the background. I barely know how to shut off my own TV. My wife always sets that bullshit that's on there. But look at how that came out. Decided to throw her in the oven. Looks like a beauty.